still access it. So that's that's something that, yeah, you, do you see um, a notice? This meeting is being recorded on your screens. Yeah, and just tap or click continue and we can go from there. Um, let's see if there's anything else. So I had some administrative tasks before I opened the training. The first was to make to establish the the co-hosts, which I did. And now Arvin, I am going to make you the host and turn it over to you. And Arvin, as soon as you're host, if you can make me co-host, can you do that? I will. I will at least. Okay. Then I just want to remind you that the agenda that the agenda is going to be first we're going to be preparing your ipad for presenting there's some cool steps to get it ready and then sharing and we're going to cover three file types a powerpoint a keynote and a google slides and then the q a all right i think we're ready for showtime then i'm turning it over to arvin okay good morning everybody um i will just go ahead and share the screen so we can start our presentation And so with the demonstration that we're doing for the iPad, um, we just I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Arvin Lamanicio. I'm the multimedia specialist here at CSUDH, CEIE. And what I do is I take care of all the um, AV um, components in the classroom and also just take care of um, technology-wise what's happening in the college. And this is part of uh, the responsibilities I have is to be able to take that information and give it to our staff and our members, um, whether they're instructors or uh, students, um, to be able to use the technology that we're using, especially nowadays. I'm sure everybody's gotten caught up with how Zoom is and how, um, how useful that is with um, alternative modes of, um, of education and modalities. Um, but I also wanted to introduce um, Anissa. Anissa, please uh, say something about yourself. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Anissa Barton Thompson. Uh, I am the social media specialist and web developer for the College of Extended and International Education. Um, I'm also a CSUDH alum, uh, class of 93, and I am a former uh, web development instructor for 23 years here with Extended Ed. And uh, technology is my passion. I, I absolutely love all of the cool things. Uh, I know. COVID is a weird time, but I'm really appreciative of the fact that we're able to take uh, advantage of using all of this technology and putting it to our best use in terms of communicating with each and every one of you. So welcome to today's session, and I'm going to turn it back over to Arvin. And um, before we get into the presentation and demonstration itself, I just want to thank you to Elise to invite us to provide this uh, presentation to you. I, I appreciate that because Every time we are able to go out of our comfort zone here at the university, it gives us a, a challenge and also uh, a self um, self worth in terms of giving our information to everyone else in the community. Um, this is a, a great thing. I'm very excited about it. Um, I hope you guys um, learn a lot of things from what we're going to be showing you. And as far as um, going on, just wanted to make sure that if there are people um, with their iPads or a second device, please go ahead and either mute your um, audio or disconnect it. Um, that way there's no feedback loop, but I know that um, Nicole has already muted everyone, so that's taken care of. Um, again, please ask your questions in the chat, or if you wanna just take a note and make sure you have it at the end. We'll, I hope to have a, a big portion of the Q&A um, in this presentation because Anissa and I are very hands-on people. So we wanna have that kind of opportunity for everyone else. Um, and with that, um, I think we're, I'm gonna turn it over to Anissa okay. in terms of the demonstration. And um, here we go. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and stop share and Anissa, okay. take it away. Okay. So I'm actually joining you from both my desktop computer and my iPad, and my iPad is an iPad Pro 2020. I have had it literally about a month. And uh, I wanted to 
make sure that I am able to demonstrate um, several of the files. So I have a PowerPoint, I have a keynote, I have a Google slide, um, and all of these things are presentable on the iPad environment. So I'm actually talking to you now because there are certain portions of this that we're unable to uh, share screen because it's in the process of uh, actually connecting to the iPad. So I'm going to talk you through what I'm doing. And then as soon as you're connecting, you're going to be able to see what we're doing. And Arvin, if you can go ahead and advance. Oh, no, you don't have the, the slides up. That's fine. So I am actually yeah. going to click on. And if you guys want to, you can follow along with me just to get to a certain point. In the upper right corner of your iPad, you'll notice that you have your microphone, your start video, and share screen, which of course is your green uh, button that is highlighted because that's the crux of everything that we're doing with Zoom. You have participants and you have more. We'll use every one of those icons, but the one that I'm gonna focus on right now is share screen. And when I tap that share screen icon, my drop down menu actually tells me and some of you were actually able to connect because i saw the screen flash for a second and that's a good <laughs> thing um, but my drop down gives me a, quite a few options on this particular meeting i see screen photos icloud drive website url bookmark and whiteboard and depending on the types of services and things that you use, you might see some other options too, like maybe Microsoft OneDrive or Dropbox or other kinds of cloud storage options as well. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on screen. So I'm sharing screen with screen. And what that's going to allow me to do is to share the entire iPad and then allow me to choose which application and therefore what kind of file I'm going to present. So I'm going to click on that screen option. And if you're if you happen to be following along with me, you may notice that your screen has changed. Everything is blacked out. And in the center of that screen, you're getting a message. You're getting a screen broadcast. You're getting a list of applications. You're getting a start broadcast button and a, an option to turn on or off your microphone. Now, that first thing that I want to address is everything on your screen, that top message. It says everything on your screen, including notifications, will be recorded. Enable do not disturb to prevent unexpected notifications. So it's telling me a couple of things right off the bat. Um, the first thing that I want to address is everything on your screen, including notifications, will be recorded. Now that's a little bit of a, a misleading. It's accurate, but it's a little bit misleading. They're not telling you that you're actually going to start recording your screen. What they're telling you is that anything that you're presenting could potentially be recorded, including things that you may not be aware are on your screen. So if you're in your PowerPoint, but you switch over to your desktop and you have other applications or you switch to your photos, it may temporarily show something from your photos catalog or wherever you happen to be in your device. So they're just giving you a little bit of advanced warning to let you know when you go into this screen broadcast, this is um, uh, going to be a potential uh, thing that you should address that anything can be seen by the viewer. So I see somebody has clicked on share screen on theirs. And if you can go ahead and stop your broadcast, that would be awesome. <laughs> or Arvin, you can stop the share for them. Um, once I click start broadcast, it gives me a, a countdown for about three to five seconds. And then what you should be seeing right now is my screen. I got a notification that says Zoom, you are sharing your screen and it's waiting for me to do something. So I'm actually sharing my screen right now and it's just waiting for me to do something. How many of you are seeing my screen right now? If you can use your reactions and give me a yes, that would be awesome. And I know um, um, Phil isn't having uh, that either, Anissa. Okay. So Phil, we can um, troubleshoot that when at the end of the presentation. Okay. So right now- you I'm are... okay now. Oh, oh, awesome. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you for that. 
And what you're seeing is my actual iPad um, layout. And I'm noticing a little bit of a screen delay too. So just be aware that you may have latency issues depending on uh, the quality of your internet connection. I'm actually getting a message right now that says my internet connection is unstable. Is anybody hearing a lag from me? Yes. Okay. So I'm giving myself a moment to let my internet catch up. I am aware that my internet connection may be trying to troubleshoot balancing multiple devices. So that's something to be aware of. What I'm actually going to do, okay. I've got a notification that just popped up on my screen. You're gonna see it in a second because I know there's a lag. And I don't want those notifications to be available. So I'm gonna pull down from the upper right corner of my screen and go to my control center. My control center is right behind where you see that my battery life 84% and my Wi-Fi connection. My control center is now on the screen and you'll notice a few things. So right now in the lower left corner of that control center, I've got a little icon that's pulsing. That icon is my screen broadcast. Now, normally when you come to this and you're not in Zoom, that would say screen recording. That is actually Zoom using that screen recording function on your iPad to send your display to Zoom and broadcast your display. Now, what I wanna do is, we were just saying before, we don't want those notifications to show up. So I'm going to look to the center of my control center area Right next to the lock, you'll see a little moon icon. That moon icon allows me to turn on my do not disturb, which allows me to then make some controlled adjustments for how long I want my notifications to disappear, to not pop up on the screen. So I'm gonna say for one hour as an example, but again, you have other options until this evening or until I decide to turn it back on again. And when it's active, you then see that the button is highlighted, the moon turns a different color, and your, just your notifications should then be turned off. I am now Anissa, ready. Be, Anissa mm -hmm. before you leave that screen, mm -hmm. for the people on their iPads, the way to bring that up, Anissa mentioned it, I want to repeat it, is swipe down um, from the upper right of your iPad screen. Right behind the battery, mm -hmm. right behind where you yeah. see your battery life. If you hold okay. your finger and pull down on your screen, that will open up the control center. Okay. And, and then, then you how can do we simply get rid of it, Anissa? Yeah, I was just saying, you can simply there tap away to get the control center to go back to your desk or to your laptop display. Or I keep saying laptop, your iPad display. And then from this point, you can decide what is the type of um, presentation that you need to make. And you'll notice at the bottom of the screen in my dock, I've got quite a few things open and ready to go. So I've got my settings, I've got my Zoom application. My fourth icon over is Google Slides, then PowerPoint, Keynote, and I've even got YouTube and Google Chrome and my Google Photos and camera and other assorted um, applications that I use on a regular. So when I want to get to those things, it's very simple to just drag the application that you need. Say I was tapping on notes and I wanna bring notes onto my doc, I can drag and pull down. And when I release it, it is now a part of that doc. So that's a quick way to make a shortcut to the applications that you use most frequently and then tap away to commit it. I'm going to take my notes out of that. And in this case, I want to open PowerPoint. So I've clicked on PowerPoint. It may take a second on your screen to open up. And what you're seeing is my collection of PowerPoint files that are ready to go. Now, when you're presenting for PowerPoint, um, that's going to actually use one of two things, either PowerPoint online in a web browser or PowerPoint in the application. So if you have PowerPoint as an app, that would be the ideal way to, uh, to display your presentation. And let's say for instance, that I wanted to open up my very first one that says, welcome Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. It may take a moment 
you may have a little bit of a lag while it's bringing in the PowerPoint. And I, I purposely wanted to open a PowerPoint that I have not opened yet so that you guys can get an idea of how it's important to make sure that if you are presenting, have that PowerPoint already open and available on your laptop or on, sorry, on your iPad so that it has a chance to fully connect, fully open up all of the content, all of the graphics, download all of the information and assets and fill it into that PowerPoint so that it's ready to present. And you'll notice looking at the thumbnails along the side, um, you'll see sometimes a little mountain uh, image graphic that lets you know that that image hasn't fully populated yet. So it's just waiting for the full PowerPoint file to come over the internet because this is a um, this is coming through the internet. This is a cloud-based presentation. This application does not, or I'm sorry, this file does not live on my iPad. It is in my OneDrive uh, location. So there's lots of places where your files can live. Um, it can be in OneDrive, Google Drive. Uh, it can live on, on your iPad physically, and you can open it locally, and it should be ready to go. But as long as you're locating those files beforehand and then having them preload, it's very easy to present. And once you're in the application, then it is very easy to just go ahead and start your presentation. And I want to clarify the difference between your opening a file and showing it on the screen versus you presenting the file. Right now, you can see all of my PowerPoint. I'm sliding up the left hand side to view all of those lovely thumbnails. And that's all fine and dandy if I click on it. I can show each slide, but that's not actually presenting the document. Um, I noticed that um, one of our attendees, when we first got started, I think it was Jim, uh, had mentioned that uh, he's watched presentations where it was just show a screen, show a next screen, show a next screen. There was no animation. There was no fluid transition from one slide to the next. There may not have even been um, uh, the ability to play back video or hear the sound or anything along those lines. So there's a difference between just showing a file and presenting the file. And how we present is the way we would present like we do on a desktop is we start the slideshow. How do we do that? If you're looking in the upper right corner of your screen, you're gonna notice five little icons. And of course, the very first one is a little playhead triangle. So upper right corner, I'm going to tap on that triangle and I am now actually showing the PowerPoint in presentation mode. And when I'm presenting, um, it allows me to still uh, control videos that are in playback, if there's audio, um, if there are animations that need to be run. And when you're moving through your slides, you're simply flicking with your finger to the left or to the right to advance or um, go back on your slides. So if I want to go backwards, I'm swiping to the right, right on the screen. And when I'm done with that presentation, all I have to do is simply look to the top. Now you notice there's no controls on the screen. But if I look to the top of my iPad screen and tap one time in the empty black space above the PowerPoint or above the presentation, my um, simple presentation controls will return. And in the upper left corner, there's an X where I can close or end that slideshow. On the upper right corner, there's an option for me to be able to make annotations on the screen. Um, there are highlight controls and pin controls and I can actually um, use on that third icon the ability to um, open up a collection. It may take a little bit of time to load because this is a pretty graphic intensive um, slide, but to be able to black the screen or get to other um, slides in that deck. When I'm so, done, oh, listen, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, mm -hmm. While you're here, um, I just wanted to show, wanted to see if you have one slide that has an animation to it so that there, um, so that we can see a difference between that and, because um, you, you spoke about that uh, okay. a while ago. 
so I'm going to open one that I know this is this is one of uh, Nicole's presentations, but on one of ours for extended ed's uh, project management certificate program. I'm going to take a moment to open this one up and it's going to give you all of the text information right off the bat. It's going to take a second to load. As soon as I see that first slide load in, I can actually have that presentation ready to go. It's going to continue um, pulling in the information from the internet. There's all my graphics just popped in. And when I start that presentation, giving it a second to fully load, I have on this opening slide an audio component and when, by the way, when I was in the broadcast, I actually told Zoom to also use the microphone. So if I present, let's see. And this is very I guess handy. I'm still waiting for it. If Go you ahead. have a video that you want to share from YouTube that's embedded within your PowerPoint, and that also allows you to have um, sound to come through while you're presenting. I think it's still waiting. I should have picked one that wasn't quite so <laughs> intensive, but um, okay. it, ha Anissa, it has an audio on it. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, while we're waiting, do you want to go through the steps again for sharing sure. PowerPoint? Sure, so absolutely. Step one is? So step one, I'm going to take it all the way back to the front of our Zoom. I'm in Zoom. I click on my start share. Now, right now, mine says stop share because I'm already sharing my screen but you would see your green stop share. That's your step one. Your step two is to select what it is that you're sharing. And our best practice recommendation again is to use screen so that you can actually take full advantage of all of the applications, the presentation applications that, you're, um, that you have available to you. Once you click on that screen share, you're going to select start broadcast when the menu pops up in the center and we'll show a screen uh, screenshot of that again, screen, just in yeah. case anybody yeah. needs a, a reference point. Once you click start broadcast, it will count down. And again, it'll give you an option to make sure you have your microphone on or off so that you can share sounds from that iPad as well. And then your next step is to, uh, you're going to be put back into Zoom and you're going to want to swap your screen. Um, for, for those of you who are using an iPad, I think it's iPad Pro, version one, generation one and forward, you can simply swipe up from the upper left corner of your screen to get um, all of the applications that are open. Um, for those of you with older iPads, you can click the home button and then that will return you and you can select the application that you need. So I have PowerPoint, I have Keynote, I have Google Slides, I have all of these options available. So let's say for instance, this time I decide to go to Keynote. So Keynote will be open. And in this case, just like PowerPoint, it's got that lovely little play triangle in the upper right corner. And I should be able to press to play. And I am now in presentation mode. And just like with PowerPoint, it's a swipe left to advance your slides, a swipe right to go back to previous slides and you can tap on any animations or other information that you have. And when you're done with your presentation, your last step would be to um, tap at the top to end the presentation. And when you're done screen sharing, if you no longer need to present from your iPad screen, you'll notice in the upper right corner, there is a little red play button right next to your Wi-Fi, your battery, and so on. And you can simply and, tap on that and stop your broadcast. Go ahead. And I just wanted to add um, this feature with the stop share is actually, if you saw it on the PowerPoint, that's also there as well. Okay. And so this will show up on any app that you may have, whether it's Keynote or PowerPoint. So do we have any um, questions at this point? Does anybody want to try it out and give it a go and see how it works for themselves? Uh, I do have a question from Claire. She's, she sure. put it into the, uh, she said, 
she sent her PowerPoint presentation to the iCloud drive, but mm -hmm. when she tried to share it, she didn't say, uh, she said, share screen is not available. Maybe um, we can put up the, the slide that we do that. Let's okay, see. if you have that one available. And um, I'm sorry, who was it that was asking that question? It was Claire. Claire, okay, so when you're going to OneDrive, what you may wanna do is make sure that you're signed in to that OneDrive account and that you have the file open first um, so that you can get to it from Zoom and Zoom would connect to it from there. Lise, do we have a moment for Rhonda had her hand up? Is it okay if we address her question? Are we good with sure. that? All sure, right. go on. Rhonda, you can Thank unmute. You. Go ahead. Um, I just put it on chat. Oh, okay. Um, is there a particular, oh, is there a particular power presentation mm -hmm. app we should get? I have an older iPad. Okay. So I do believe that um, Microsoft PowerPoint is supported, I think back to iPad Air generation one, I think it is. I'm not too certain on that. And I know my internet seems to be going up and down, so I'll hold for a second. Can you guys hear me okay now? Yes. So when you go to the app store to find uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, it will tell you if the application is installable. It will tell you if it's compatible with your current device. Um, so it, it, it's always going to depend on um, what you have available there. But I will give you an alternative. If you are a Google slide user, you can open any PowerPoint from inside of Google Slides. And since Google Slides is a web-based um, application, even the app for Google Slides is web-based, you should be able to open that presentation pretty smoothly. Now, if you're doing some pretty complicated, um, maybe animations or, or transitions that are particular to PowerPoint, um, those may not translate as well in Google Slides. You don't have as many formatting cool options um, in slides as you do in PowerPoint, but you should at, at the very bare minimum be able to display that PowerPoint and the content within it. Okay. Thank um, you. No problem. Let me see. And I'm trying to look at the chat you. now. Go ahead. You can. You guys can read the questions for us too. Oh, let me share that. Um, okay. Oh, let me share that slide share. that we have for enabling the screen broadcast. Go for it. I think one one thing that's key from your presentation, Anissa, is that it helps if you download the application to your iPad. Um, first, it, hel it helps find your presentation. Right. And I know when I do Google Slides, we're going to see that because I downloaded Chrome and Slides to my iPad and it made it very easy to find. Mm -hmm. So so there's the prep, which is downloading the applications to your iPad, which is really easy. You can just go to App Store and download them and you know do any account sign in that you have to. And then the steps were to choose share screen from the top of your iPad to select screen, to look for the application that you're sharing. So you shared a, a, a PowerPoint first, you tap that, you saw the list of every PowerPoint you had, it was already there. Um, it came up, you press the play button up at the top and there it was, it played. It was the same thing with a keynote. All right. of the, the front end steps are the same. You had keynote downloaded to your iPad. You tapped on keynote, all of your keynote presentations were there. Tap it open and then, and then the whole thing played. Exactly. So we have, we have that process. If you download the applications to the iPad first, it, it makes it very, very easy. And when I get to Google Slides, I will tell you I have I did not share from my iPad until Wednesday night was the first time I had ever done it. <laughs> so I'm a newbie to it. And that was the procedure that I used and it made it very easy. So download the app, tap share screen, tap the application you're going to be uh, presenting in. 
it'll be in the list, tap that, tap play, you're off and running. And then it's just like my, my expression was, it's like Tinder. You know, you swipe left and swipe right. I don't know how many people know about Tinder, but it's like, <laughs> no, I don't like him. I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're just kind of swiping around. Hey, I got at least one smile out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> you got a few. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, Arvin, are you able to? Um... Yeah, let me share okay, that, um, okay. that slide. And this slide I'm showing is um, to enable that screen broadcast on your iPad in the control center. Um, this, these are screenshots that um, Anissa had um, captured from her iPad. Mm -hmm. And this is um, how to get to it. Uh, you actually select uh, control center, either by swiping down by the, uh, um, the, the battery icon at the top right. And then also you can get to this by going to your settings in your iPad. And so if you click on the settings or tap on the settings, I'm sorry, tap on the settings and then go to your control center on, on the left side. And once you click on that control center, you'll be able to see um, the main window of any apps that you'd want to put in there. Um, this allows you to put the screen recording, which is a misnomer, really what it is, is a screen broadcast. And you can add it by tapping on that um, green um, icon next to it. There's Claire's question, is that correct? Um, so is that correct? We're want, yeah, I want to make sure that Claire's... Um, Claire's question was, I sent my PowerPoint presentation to the iCloud Drive, but when I tried to share screen, it said share screen is not available. And this right here addresses that question. And then Anissa, did you, um, from here, um, let's hear from Claire. Claire, did that answer your question? And Claire has to remember to unmute herself too. Claire, are you there? I don't see Claire any longer. Claire, if you are there, please unmute. Yeah, I don't see um, I, I don't some, see her. I don't see her in participants either. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I okay. don't see it. Okay, so, so moving if you on. if you wanted to go on to the Google slides, Anissa, we can we can go from here. Okay. And actually, at this point, I'm going to let Elise um, give it a try. So, okay, so let's see if I can do this. I wrote up a little instruction sheet first. Um, Elise, you are accessing your CSUDH drive. Wonderful for you. Yes. So so long. <laughs> so tell me. So this is what I'm doing from my Mac. Does everybody see this list? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because I wasn't sure that I'd be able to show this list, and then I'm going to switch to my iPad and actually do the share. So um, so before sharing, what I did was I downloaded Google Chrome and Google Slides to my iPad. That's what I did. That was part of my setup. Then, and I'm going to demonstrate this after, this is my, these are my written steps that I write down in case I have brain fog, but this is my written steps. So when I'm sharing, I tap share screen, and then I tap screen, just like Anissa did. I tap start broadcast. I make sure that my microphone is on because the presentation I'm going to show actually has um, videos and sound in it. So I want my microphone on. I swipe up to display the desktop. Notice that <laughs> I kind of demonstrate the swipe up. So, and then I tap um, slides, which I've downloaded. I tap the presentation. I tap that forward arrow, which it should say forward. That was a Brooklyn accent there, the forward. <laughs> uh, so the forward arrow, um, which is the play button. I tap present on this device and then I swipe left to display the slides. And at the end, I swipe down to display the title bar and tap X. So that's, that's my procedure. 
Do I have to stop this share? I yes. have to stop yes. this share before yes. I go to my iPad, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So I'm tapping share screen. I'm selecting screen. My microphone is on. Zoom is checked. I'm going to start broadcast. It's counting down. It's telling me you are sharing your screen and you're seeing that now, right? Yes. And then Careful. I swipe up and you see my cat. And now you see the icon for slides right there. And you can, and if you look, if you look um, in the second row of icons, you can see I have Chrome installed also. And you can also see some of the games I play. Because you can <laughs> see the whole issue. Yeah, yeah. So, but I'm going to tap slides. And then you see all, all of my um, presentations that I get, did in Google Slides are here. There's also one here that Ruth is going to recognize because she shared this with me. And Anissa said during this training that you can put PowerPoints in, um, in your Google Drive, in Google Slides, whatever, and you can see that Ruth's is here. So that's kind of my way to show that. I'm going to do this first one, do animals talk, which Rick may recognize because I did it for um, an SDG where he was the coordinator called Do Animals Talk? And then you see that uh, triangle in the, uh, in the top of the screen. That's my play button. And you can see it says present on this device, which I'm tapping. And there it is. And I'm just swiping left now. So there's the first one. There's the second one. There's a YouTube here, but I want to show you one feature. And this is uh, a Google Slides feature where it's easy to embed the video with, instead of having a hyperlink, it's the video and kind of the name of it instead of a hyperlink. So this is Alex. The talking parrot. Alex. And also, what Lisa, and I, I wanted to highlight something in your fi uh, file collection right. as well. How many? Two. So if you can go that back to that right. after this. I just want to make sure everybody hears Alex and his trainer. Nice okay. and clear. Okay, so you know that works. And everybody, I swear, I have had never done this before, before Wednesday night, first time. Mm -hmm. So I'm, so where and do you want me to go back to? Um, go ahead and exit out of the presentation, Elise, and go to your um, presentation um, uh, collection. And so to get out of this, um, there you go. You exit out and then go back to the file collection that you have, the, where you have all your presentations. If you click on the, the, the arrow pointing to your left, there you go. And I just wanted to uh, show that you see that there's two icons that you can see with um, the Google Docs as the yellow with the white rectangular inside. But if you kind of look at the one that says um, it's kind of orange or red and it has a P, that's actually um, a PowerPoint. So if you wanted to, uh, I just want to reiterate what Anissa and uh, had said about where to store your PowerPoints or your files, you can actually go through here if you wanted to play your, your PowerPoint through the Google Slides. Thank you for that, Elise. And then as Elise, um, if, when she stops sharing, she's just going to press on that button at the top right. The red um, pulsing in the upper right next to the Wi-Fi. Okay, and Elise, you're muted. And so from, from here, Anissa, did, is there anything else that you wanted to show about um, the string on the iPad? And I know um, Amy had a, um, a question too, so. Well, I wanna open it up to questions now. And then if there's anything that we need to demo, we can do that okay. um, so that we can make sure that we address those specific questions that you have. So does anyone so, have anything in particular? Yeah, looking at the time, we, we've got about a full 10 minutes, so this is, right. this is great. 
PowerPoint um, the, for the step by steps? Can we go through that one more time? Just show sure. Sure. And right, this time you. around, um, this time around, I'll yeah. my my take PowerPoint has fully loaded and it's got the full media and everything ready to go. So um, and I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to take a little a different approach this time. I'm going to turn off my virtual background. Y'all don't laugh at my grandmother's hutch. <laughs> OK, it's a nice. And, <laughs> thank you. And I'm going to do a little spotlight and show you what I'm doing on my iPad. And I know the color is pretty vibrant here. So I'm in my Zoom meeting. And I'm going to tap in the upper right corner for share screen. My options pop up with screen photos and so on. So I'm going to tap screen as my go to. And there is that. OK, there's the, the opportunity to broadcast. What would you like to do? I've made sure that my microphone is on, that it's set to broadcast for Zoom. And I'm going to start the broadcast. And as soon as I do that, then our display, of course, has changed over. I'm going to swipe up or tap to bring the screen back to Zoom. And then I'm going to come back to the interface by, in this case, I'm on an iPad Pro. I'm going to swipe up from the upper left corner to swap my application. Or if it's the, if you only have a few applications over, you can also use, I think it's three fingers, and just pull, swipe from the left, and you'll swap applications like that. OK, so I'm in my PowerPoint. It has fully loaded. And I'm going to tap that play button in the upper right corner. My presentation is currently running. Takes a second. There it goes. And I even have some music in the upper left corner. I'm going to tap to play. Does everybody hear the music? And if you do hear it, go ahead and click a reaction for yes or thumbs up. My slides are automatically advancing because I put that into the PowerPoint. I've got a little bit of a lag, but it is going through. The music's playing automatically. And this is the difference between a presentation and just showing your file. So I wanted to make sure that everybody understands how that presentation works. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop my presentation by tapping in the upper, uh, the upper bar, the upper left, and press the X to stop the slideshow. It's going to take a second on you guys' side. Okay. And then when I'm done sharing my screen. I look to the upper right corner for the red stop broadcast. I'm going to tap it. And in the center of the screen, choose screen broadcasting stop. And our display is going to go away. And it is done. see how are we doing how's everybody doing you're frozen anisa i see you frozen in your i'm not sure are does we anyone okay? else see in i'm here yeah, i had a little getting... i had a leg i had a lag yeah i have too many devices yeah. <laughs> um i i know that there's a powerpoint anisa with the step-by-steps do we have time for for that um that yeah. actually showed exactly what you're pulling up uh, Mm -hmm. And we still just have, um, we'll go through that. And as we're doing um, through the step one, two, three steps, if you have any questions, please feel free to place them in the chat, raise your hands. And I think, Elise, did you have something else that you wanted to share afterwards, before? Um, I have a poll that I can send out now. This would be my first time. There's no reason why I shouldn't just do something for the first time in front of 27 people, right? Go for it. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> 
Okay. So I'll, I while have Elise a... is doing the poll, um, we'll take Phil's question in just a second. But Elise, go ahead and introduce your poll. You want me to launch the poll? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm launching the poll. And it's asking which screen share option you've selected in the past when you did a presentation. Okay, we have to do launch. And just so that you know, co-hosts aren't allowed to um, answer these questions. So it's just you. So at least that might be if you are a co-host, so you don't have that option, but you can see it and you have can end it whenever you change. Elise, what, how many of your attendees have voted? Seven of 22. Awesome. What percentage is that? 31%. Okay. Amy, um, Anissa or Arvin says, I cannot find the top right button. Can you screen, send me a screenshot? We are going to be going through that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I have nine of 22. So some people, I'm going I, to let it run I for a cheated. few more seconds. I cheated. I voted from my iPad. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm going to, if, um, so, so far we have um, 10 respondents, five chose screen, five chose iCloud drive, and one chose something else. Yes, and now the awesome. 11, six went to screen. Now yep. you have 55% of these attend of 27 attendees um, use screen as their option um, to select before training in this meeting, right? Right. So that's good to know because it means that the, the Omnilore folks have been choosing screen. It's not unfamiliar to them. That's good to Great. know. That's and good. also I just want to say um, it's also shared share content um, is the other one if it's uh, okay it's so um amy is asking that we share that screen we want to be uh, aware sure. of our time so that uh -huh. she could see um, the and again we have a hand from stuff. phil and jim is also waving okay jim, go ahead oh this i think i know the answer to this is there any way you can increase the number of participants that you're seeing on an iPad by shrinking the pictures. Unfortunately, in other words, no. you restrict. Right, they, they the give you a no. restriction. The answer is no. Um, there's there's two options that you have, whether you're on iPad, um, desktop, laptop, whatever your device is. iPad will only allow you to show whatever fits in your display. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's my my full display. Um, if, on my desktop, your default option is 25 participants, so a five by five grid. And in the settings, you can actually increase that to a seven by seven. So 49 people is the max that you can show on your display. When you get to that 50th person, it rolls over to a second screen. And that's so on the, the, that's on the desktop. Mm -hmm. A desktop. Mm -hmm. But with the iPad, you're restricted to what number? Uh, I do believe it is a 25 by 25. It's that's what I'm, that's what I'm seeing on my, it's a five by five. Mm -hmm. Okay, how many people can you put on there? Uh, how many people can you have oh, in your 25. meeting? Uh, clarify yes, the question. That you're, you're, go ahead, that you're seeing? 25. It's 25, mm -hmm. but, there, mm -hmm. but you can scroll. On an iPad? On an She's iPad. Saying, oh, Rick. Great. Yeah. But Rick, you know, more than 25 can be in a meeting. So there right. is a difference and you can see more than 25 by doing what, Anissa? So when I get to the 26th person on the screen, I'll see an arrow on the right edge and on the left edge if I'm at multiple screens. And I'm simply swiping to the left or the right to see the remainder of the folks. And it's the same way that like if you're on an iPhone, um, and you can only mm -hmm. see four at a time, but there's more people swipe to the left or to the right to see more of the attendees. See your yeah. Phil you... has his hand. Phil, Phil has right. his. Phil has yeah. his hand raised, and we want to address Amy's um, picture next with the photo. Go ahead, Phil. Okay. Yeah, my iPad recently went from a maximum of twelve displayed to sixteen. Uh, um, that's not 16. what I was had my hand up for. Um, 
<laughs> I usually up, uh, prepare some things on a desktop PC and upload them to iCloud. Mm -hmm. And so then I go to iCloud. Um, I can talk with somebody offline afterwards or by email, but I'm interested to find out different places. Like, I don't even know for sure what I can store on my iPad versus having it up in the cloud. Um, so um, if you're if you're okay for me to address it real quick, um, it's very important to know where you're storing, but you can store wherever is um, convenient for your iPad to access it. So if you are storing to Dropbox and you use Dropbox on your desktop yeah. and Dropbox on your iPad, you, you can go to that location in Dropbox on your iPad and open that application or open the, the file that you need to have presented. The difference is, is are you just showing the file or are you presenting the file? So if it's a PowerPoint um, and you just say open the file, if you don't have PowerPoint, uh, the application on your iPad, you're just going to be showing slide, 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 slide. But if you're presenting with music and animations and all of that, you want the PowerPoint app as well. We, we want to get to Amy's um, question and we'll see that in the slide. Thank you. And Anissa, if you can show your screen to show that, because I don't think I have the, the photo on. on that uh, to show my files. Um, it's actually Amy, if you can. No, Amy, could you repeat? You can unmute yourself. OK, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. OK, sorry. Um, it, it was mentioned at least a couple of times that there is something I can press on the upper right hand corner to start and stop oh, the yes. presentation oh, in Zoom. And I do not mm -hmm. see that on the presenters um, where she was presenting what I was seeing on my iPad. What I see on the very top, I see how much uh, battery life I have, the percentage, the VPN, my Wi-Fi, and then the tiny little green dot. Is that the is that the green colored dot that you're talking about? If it's a wide green dot, are you talking about this share screen or the or right next to the Wi-Fi? Right next to the Wi-Fi. I have that, but I don't have any other buttons. I think she might, I think you might actually be recording your screen at the moment. So tap on oh, it. Tap okay. on it and see what it says. Tap on what? Oh, the green. Stop, stop video? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. The green dot that you were just talking about. Dot. Okay. It's, I'm sorry. It's so tiny. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can. I'm tapping it, but it's so tiny. I feel like I'm pressing on the Wi-Fi as well. Understandable. This is an iPad Air 2. Mm -hmm. yep. I should. don't know if that makes any difference. No difference. It's all good. Amy, when Take you time. when you tap, um, if you tap in the black area above your video, okay. Do you see join audio, stop video, share screen participants? That those uh, choices or options are always on. Okay. What are you? So, so if you're in the black area on top of your video and you want it to share screen, that's the green button with the up arrow in it. You would yes. tap that and a drop down happens with options yes. that say screen, photos, iCloud Drive, etc. Okay. If you tap screen, then you see yes. the start broadcast and underneath it, it, sa it says screen broadcast. Then you see the zoom icon and a check mark. Uh, at the very bottom, it will tell you whether your microphone is on or off. So if it's red, the microphone is on. If it's gray, the microphone is off. I can't tell you how much okay. of this I just learned like in the last couple of days. And then to start, and then you tap start broadcast. Thank you. I yeah, got yeah. it. Okay. I see it okay. Now. Perfect. And, so and Amy talking. about the share screen. Yes. Uh -huh. now right. That's been there all along. I right. thank okay. you so much. I do okay. Not. Cool. And Ooh, I want to. I will. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I want to tell everybody that if any of this, if you want to walk through it at any time, just get in touch with me. I'm happy to do it. Um, I know the CSUDH people can make themselves available too, but. 
I don't have a paycheck anymore. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm very available, <laughs> right, Hello. to help. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to go through it. And cross my heart, I had never shared a presentation from my iPad before late Wednesday night. <laughs> so, so, so it's all kind of fresh me. That's why I made that checklist for myself too, but I'm happy to do it for who's ever here, but I'm glad mm -hmm. that helped Amy. And I'd like to thank uh, you. Yes. Tremendous. Like to help. Share this uh, screen of all our um, emails and things like that. So if you wanted to take that down, it's also going to be in the chat. Um, if you want to contact myself, Anissa, um, Nicole, um, let us know. Thank and then, if you wanted to do a one-to-one -one or a smaller group, um, we can also do that. However, if you do have other questions that uh, pertain to one particular topic, this can be a, an opportunity for us to collaborate again with, um, with all of you um, through CSUDH, uh, CEIE. And um, this would be a great uh, way to collaborate with everyone. Augman, can I ask one question? Oh, definitely. Um, how does this work on Android devices? Um, the Android device, it's actually pretty much um, it's the, the same. Um, however, there might be some differences in the user interface where the buttons are at. Mm -hmm. However, the, the mechanics of how things work um, and how we demonstrated it today, it's pretty much the same. As similar to the iPad, not to a PC or Mac. Yeah, not, not too far from it, because I think if you're jumping from a device, whether it's a phone or a tablet, and then you're going to a full-fledged um, desktop computer, um, yeah, it, it's going to be very uh, drastic. But between the devices, it's pretty much the same. Arvin, I use an Android, my Android phone, um, to join up um, double meetings. So I'm not an iPad user, but that is what I use. And um, it is similar as far as me sharing my screen, knowing where my files are accessed, having my file even accessed before, because on a, on a phone or an Android, at mm -hmm. least on mine, I'm limited to where I can save what I have down. There's a Nisa. There's a Nisa. I have so. my Android phone, and this is the exact oh. same thing that we see in the share. Okay. So photo. That's good, because that Sorry. question comes up a lot. Right. Web URL, bookmarks. Sorry, I know that's hard to see. Um, screen and camera and share whiteboard. So they're virtually identical to what the iPad has available. Sorry, I know my camera's Rick, not. Rick, if you wanna set up a, you know, a little small group to test things out, I know we're all happy to do that with you too. No, I, I've tested them out on iPads, iPhones and the PC, but I don't have any Android devices. And that question has come up. Right. Well, how does this work on the Android? So I'm glad to hear Auburn's opinion and uh, you know, that, yeah, cool. they're pretty Glad. much the same. And Nicole and Anissa's experience. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Zoom's I'm sorry, I was, I was getting Anissa's, Anissa, and she wasn't up on my screen, so I was trying hard to Quite all right. <laughs> but I will okay. say this, it, it's fantastic to know that Zoom, do, they do a really great job of trying to make sure that their products are consistent across as many platforms as possible. The key is, um, this is a general reminder that we didn't add early on. Try to keep your Zoom up, your Zoom apps up to date as frequently as possible. And they pretty much put out updates maybe once every week to two weeks because they're trying to make sure things are secure, that they're adding new features that are really helpful to people. Um, so if you are up on keeping your apps up to date, make sure that that's one of those that you do. And I think we're at the top of the hour, eight, eight past. So if anyone here have any questions, please go ahead and contact um, either myself, uh, Anissa, or Elise as contacts. And then as far as the video, we'll post this up again next, next week once we get it all um, finished up in post-production. And um, you can refer to it as uh, Elise will give you a, a link to it. Um, yeah. As far as that, I, I do appreciate everyone's time. And from, from me, I'm always um, very glad, very excited that all of you are actually using these devices and um, using technology um, as far as you can use it for. And I'm so glad that you guys are uh, multi-platform. A lot of the student assistants yeah. that I have, they're so um, 
packaged into just one side. So they don't even want to see what the other side has to offer them. But I'm very glad that you guys are multi-platform and you guys are using it uh, as best as it can be. Awesome. So I want to make sure that I thank everybody, Nicole, Stephanie, Anissa, and Arvin for the time they put into this for the focus. Um, I want to remind everybody that Rick's computer group is going to have um, a, a, a computer talk on sharing from an iPad. I'll also. be sending out an email on that on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you'll be seeing that also. But we're we're glad for the um, for the reinforcement. And Rick, thank you for doing that. Um, and thank everybody for attending. And if, like I said, um, any. Go One ahead. more thing, if you save the chat, um, there's a, a, a survey we're asking everyone to fill out. I know people are survey um, over surveyed, but also <laughs> if you'd like to save the chat, um, you can go through the three dots. Stephanie put some information there and save um, any of the chat to links okay. to webinars. Okay. Uh, other than that, I think, um, mm -hmm. there we go. Where is that, that other photo? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a, great, have a great weekend. Okay. Yes, Elise, hold thank on. Thank you. Elise, if you. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording at this moment. Okay. I'm stopping mine as well. <laughs>